would have had to fight with him again, and uh, he would have got away from us, and it went nonstop there at the end. So I uh, just tried to minimize my mistakes at the end, and I seen him on the big screen uh, with two to go, and I knew uh, I knew it was gonna it was gonna get real, and, uh, and then I just made sure I slid myself down in three and four and block uh, his, if he was gonna bonsai me or not. Well, Brian, you're fidgeting with the bottle there, and it's obviously you're you're doing the best you can to to miss. But how about you? The same question. Did it did it it change in your mind? Or was your car seemingly um, going away? I think. Uh, I mean, yes and no. Obviously, it was a, it was a huge uh, point in the race where he was able to restart on my on my bumper. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing for us was being out front. I was trying to do the best I could to figure out where I needed to be, but you know. It's hard to, it's hard to, it's hard to move everywhere and see what you know, see where you need to be uh, when you're out front. You try and move around as much as you can without exposing yourself. And uh, yeah, I think the biggest thing under that red, uh, you know, track sat for for 10 minutes or so, and um, I'd been kind of working the, almost the middle in three, in one and two, and, and been able to get some runs. And yeah, I kind of went away after the red. And, um, you know, then I was up to me to figure out how to get around the top, and just you know, took four or five laps to get it, get it figured out. And uh, by then he was. You know, straight away out, and felt like uh, you know, we strung some strung, strung together some good corners there uh, towards the end. And I think you know, as much as anything, it might have been just him, you know, playing it safe there. He could probably see had a little bit of a lead, and we were able to get back to him and uh, just you know, tried everything I could and wanted to to get bigger on and uh, buried myself a little too much and, and gave him enough of a gap. It really didn't matter what was going to happen at three and four. So. Um, you know, I was, I was a little bit worried about that, you know, starting from the pole. Um, honestly, wasn't that upset that Christopher got the jump because we were able to kind of move around see where we needed to be a little bit there early on. And, um, you know, figured, uh, I figured at some point we are going to have to change up what we were doing and just uh, didn't quite make it in time. Mike, Rico, it uh, seemed like from your celebration that there was more emotion this year than even last year. How does it feel not being a two-time winner in this race? It's great. Uh, this race is so hard to win, uh, and it, and I'm just uh, it's it's my favorite race of the year. Uh, it's it's the one I look forward to coming to, uh, especially after winning last year. It's just, uh, it's just this place has a special place in my heart. And, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, as you, as all anyone that walks in this building, they can see uh, how special this race is, and, and it being live on TV now and. Uh, and the car count they get, and the people that come to watch, and uh, the people that watch on TV is just unbelievable. And this event just keeps growing and growing and growing, and uh, it just it just means a lot to me uh, just to be here. Rico, I think the the K and M move was announced after this race last year, and then of course you had a big announcement yesterday. Is there any denying what a springboard this event has been for your career? Uh, I just think it's a it's a race. Uh, it's just another race on my schedule, and uh, but it's the biggest one. And I think uh, you know, when, always anyone who wins this race uh, has a lot of momentum going into their 2000, you know, their season because uh, it's the first race of the year. And, uh, it's I don't know. It's great. the move that you made jump and I guess it is off the cushion forgive me you know I'm NASCAR not her but yeah. coming off the corner you just kept you kept playing with it trying to see what you could get and get the jump off of it to come across the line talking to me yes sir <laughs> Sorry. it's been a long day Rico so um I, I think this is one of the toughest tracks to be leading that uh, to be a leader and set the pace uh, just because the with, with how much the track changes throughout a, a feature or any time, a race, uh, you can be in, you know running second and third. You could you have the advantage of moving around on the track surface on the surface, uh, then being the leader and, and running the line uh, that you started running uh, where you got to the lead at. So uh, I just uh, you know I was opening my entry up a lot more into three, and uh, I could carry a lot more speed than Brian exiting and. Uh, just made sure, uh, you know, I didn't do nothing too crazy when I got to him, uh, and just paced myself the whole race uh, was the biggest thing. This race is, uh, it's a long race for a midget race, and, uh, you know, the track changes uh, a lot throughout the feature, and uh, you just got to uh, move around at the right time. 
Well, that's a good lead-in for you, Zach. You seemed very competitive the entire race, um, from beginning to end. It, it, you were just in the thick of it the, the entire time, not quite up to the leader, but right there in second and, and battling with somebody throughout the entire event. Yeah, I mean, we were, we were decent. We weren't great. Um, we, we were way too tight early, and, and then once we moved to the cushion, we were even t tighter still. So, um, you know, we, we struggled with side bite all weekend, so when we went to this race, we kind of went maybe a little bit overboard. Um, you know, still nothing to be ashamed of, we were in third, so, um, you know, we, we, the pull shuffle definitely helped us, um, you know, we went from drawing a 12 to a 8, um, then we picked off a couple cars early, and then we just kind of kept working and working, and, and, you know, next thing you know, we were strong second, so, um, you know, it could late in the race, there wasn't nothing we were going to do, we weren't we weren't a car to win, so um, you know, hats off to these guys. They drove an awesome race, and it's just a lot of fun. Uh, you take you take racing very personal, very detailed, and you finished third. You know that pointed a fine job. But if you had a chance to redo the race, or how would you set up the car? I don't know how would you race it differently. I might have moved the right rear tire out and uh, put a little bit more air in it. <laughs> I just when it got to the cushion like that, it was so tight, um, especially when we were banging in, it was just one of toss the nose, so probably would have moved it out a little bit, put some more air in it, and uh, hopefully been able to gas it more. Ryan, you've just finished second, yet you were the first person to Rico after the race. Can you just talk a little bit about what the respect level is like? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, well, that's a late night Tulsa story, I guess, that's <laughs> how that came about, but I told him if... Uh, I was giving him a hard time about doing donuts there after his prelim night. I, I told him he's won the race before. It's a prelim night shouldn't be a big deal anymore. But uh, uh, and I told him, if, I said he said he got up on top of the cage and nobody was there to catch him. So I said, well, I'll tell you what, if I run second, I'll I'll come out and catch you. And so I had to make sure I lived up on on uh, to my I wasn't my part. Catch you in the fire. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you said you were. <laughs> But uh, no, there's a, I mean there's a huge level of respect. If you look back at the big midget races over, you know, really this year especially, but uh, over the last couple of years, you know, um, it's been a lot of me and him and, and, and Christopher mixed in there too. And, uh, we have a lot of fun racing together. Um, I can't say I'm that upset to see him go truck racing. So <laughs> say a lot less. <laughs> Maybe pick up a few more trophies. But no, it's uh, it's been really cool. I, I you know I, I mentioned it earlier and. and I don't, uh, Rico knows I love him, so I can say that, you know, he's, you know, four years ago, he couldn't really put ten laps together in a midget, uh, or maybe it was five, I, I can't remember how many, but, you know, three, four years ago, he couldn't put ten together in a midget, and here he is, the, you know, two-time champion of, you know, the biggest race in short track racing, so it's been a lot of fun to see him grow and develop, and um, I like to think that maybe racing with me, I, I taught him a thing or two, but it's been, it's been fun, and, um, you know, we went... I think they showed on Mav right before this race the uh, Leffler, and that was another one that uh, we went wheel to wheel for. So it's been a lot of fun. There's a lot of respect there, and uh, I always say I hate losing, but uh, you know it's okay when you lose to you know a guy like Rico that uh, you know uh, you know who earned it. He drove by. Us. Rico, I asked uh, Brian this question the other night, and, and in, in terms of the big races, you have the battle between the drivers, but you also have the battle between the the brothers. So. Keith and Rusty kids as, as drivers. Do. Does this cross your mind? And you have two brothers that really go head to head in these big events. It's uh, it's pretty crazy the success those two have had, uh, uh, let alone away from each other and, and together. Uh, you know, back in the day when they used to own their own cars, and uh, uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's they got some bragging rights and uh, and they they build great race cars. That's what it comes down to. Uh, they build the best race cars, and uh, and they're the smartest guys. <laughs> you know, they, they and they and they're not afraid to work together when it comes down to it. And uh, you know, they, it's just, it's a special moment. It's just as special for me uh, and Brian. I'm, I'm, I'm sure uh, for them winning too. Zach, you've been a champion of a couple different series. You've had success at Belleville, but in terms of just elevating your name, uh, any thoughts that uh, being here at the podium after? 330 other drivers that competed, that this may be as big as anything that you've accomplished in midget racing in terms of, of recognition? I mean, in terms of recognition, most likely. Um, normally, they don't remember the guys that run second and third. So, you know, we got to 
to get the recognition, you got to win the race. So, um, you know, it's there's it's a big accomplishment just to make this show. It's, if you're in a, a B or C or even a D main, some nights that's as tough as any feature. So, sure. um, you know, at a normal outdoor event, so um, 336 or whatever entries there was, and you know, we were the third best car. So, um, you know, it's definitely a good thing. Um, you know, can't complain about it, but uh, you want to always strive to be better. Sure. I, I don't know if it, what what the actual numbers were, but it certainly seemed that there were even more people here this year than last year. And you are all fantastic ambassadors for this sport. You're great with the people. I see you stop and take time, talk to people. Brian's got the, you know, the the, the NASCAR influence over there in his pit and, and throngs of people that come with it. Um, you know, you're, Rico, you built so much popularity. Zach, the same thing. How do you how do you balance all of that in a week like this? I mean, how do you get the job done? And right right up to you went down the ramp. I saw you guys signing autographs and talking to fans. How how do you do it? That's just our role, I think, uh, and it's all part of uh, you know what we love to do. And uh, and if, you know, I feel if you don't make those guys happy, uh, then we don't have anyone to race for. Yeah, I think uh, you know he touched on it. You know, it's. Uh, you know, it's just part of the gig anymore. It's uh, you know, without uh, everybody here, this race isn't what it is. I mean, it's 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 special because you know you have the the, the higher names and, and motorsports here watching and, and having fun and um, you know you're, you're signing autographs and, and doing different stuff. And I think it's just uh, what makes our sport so special. Uh, the accessibility. I think you see that. Um, you know. That's why you know NASCAR became uber popular. Um, you know, throughout the years, as, as they recognized that, they grabbed our heroes and continue to grab our heroes and elevate them. And, and uh, you know, I watch on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays to watch Rico, to watch Kyle, to watch Ricky. Um, you know, watch guys that I know from from here, not you know, not guys that came from pro late models or, or, or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with those guys. I'm just saying, uh, you know, in our venues, you know. These fans watch on Sundays because you know because he's there, because Kyle's there, and Ricky's there. Um, you know, so it's uh, it's just part of the sport, and um, I think it's something that it, as you you know this race can get to you, you know, <laughs> for a while. It's uh, you know it's a race that you come here. There's so much excitement, so much electricity in the atmosphere. In your first couple of years, you run this place, you're just like, holy uh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, and, and so um, you know, as you as you uh, spend more time here and spend more time in the sport, you learn to manage that and, and harness that, and um, you know, turn it on. Well, you all do an awesome job. Thank you. Brian, with the year that you're here enough to have, how would you say this is for a start? Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. I felt like I had a winning car and I let one slip away. But no, I mean it's a, it's a great start. Obviously, there's a lot of races, um, and you know the greatest thing about the schedule that I'm running next year is uh, if you have a bad night. There's I think I tweeted the other night that I had 196 or something to go. I think I can't remember the count now, but I'm somewhere still in the 190. So I'm still I'm sure I'm going to give a few more away and. Uh, and uh, lose a couple more and, and probably win a couple I shouldn't. So um, yeah, it's, a, it's a great start. It's uh, you know, this race, I always say, this, so much can happen in this race. You look at what happened to Christopher there early on. Um, you can do everything right, put yourself in position, and um, still have something happen. So uh, it's three years in a row now we've, we've uh, won our qualifying night and been in position uh, throughout the race to, to, to be on the podium. Uh, I don't think I was good enough last year to, to compete with, with Rico or even Pittman at that point in the race. But, uh, you know, we've, we've rolled out on Saturday night last three years with a shot. And that's all you can ask for here. Uh, you know, you're gonna, some years it's going to go your way, the, the, the stringing together. I really hope Rico doesn't win four or five in a row because I'll get tired of that too. But, uh, but uh, you know, this race is so hard to win and it, you know, makes what Sammy and Kevin de did, you know, so impressive. Rico winning back to back, you know, makes it, you know, really impressive. And, um, you know, you hate to let them get away when they're, you know, 10 laps away from, from your hand or uh, I, whatever, however many it was. But, uh, but at the same time, you know, we. 
we got beat, and, and that's part of racing. It's another another night. And, uh, we'll go back and tinker on our car a little bit for another year and see if we can't uh, beat. Rico, early on in the race, it was all in the bottom. You were one of the first ones to go up. They caught you some spots, and then you jumped right back up as soon as you could again. Were you set up to run the top, or were you just searching? I was just trying to be the first one up there. I don't know. Uh, I sure in the hell can't run the bottom, that's for sure. And, uh, it finally got clean, and, and then it got a, you know it got a little cushion built up, and uh, we caught a couple cautions, and it got packed down, and then uh, and then that red flag, uh, you know, like Brian said earlier, just uh, dried it out enough where you can carry a little more entry speed than the guys running the bottom, and uh, just started snookering them there on those restarts, and. That's kind of what it came down to is I feel like you make up a lot of time on restarts here. That's where you can get a lot of spots. Is that the first time Chili Bowl champions you, you snookered in a press conference? <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. It's good. <laughs> All right. Well, if you have a chance to reset the car differently for the race tonight, what would you do differently if you had to pass it up? I don't. I don't think I'd do anything different. I thought we had a race winning car. It just felt like it took oh. a lot longer this year for the track to get. Yeah, it, it took a lot. You know, it took a lot longer for it to widen out. And yeah, you know, I really just, as silly as it sounds, felt like uh, at that point in the race, you know, I'd have rather been running second or third and and um, had spent ten laps trying to maneuver and figure out what I needed because, um, you know, first lap of the restart, I went in where I had been running and. It wasn't very good anymore, so then I moved up to the next part and wasn't quite, didn't quite do it right, and then he drove by me. So uh, then at that point, you're, you know, that, then now you're hustling and trying to figure out exactly where you need to be, and you're overdriving, trying to make sure he doesn't get away. And then, uh, you know, once we settled in and figured out what we needed to do, um, you know, I don't know, it was as much that we got, we became faster than him. Then, you know, I, I felt like we were probably similar speeds that he just, you know, started being careful and. You know, making sure he didn't get tripped up on the cushion, but uh, you know, we were able to run him down and, and get close. And like I said, just didn't make the one last corner that I needed to to at least make it interesting. Any more questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you.